Hi, my name is Mathilde and I am a field application engineer at Kinova. In the previous series of videos, we saw how to unpack and install your Gen3 robotic arm and how to configure your wired LAN settings in order to control your robot from the web app. We also saw the monitoring page, the control panel and the option bar of the web app. In this video, I will go through all the tabs you can find in the web app. Let's do it! First, enter the IP address of your robot and press enter. Then, enter your username and password and click on connect. Today, I will go through all the sub-tabs you can find in the menu. Let's begin with the configuration tabs. The configuration tab is composed of four sub-tabs. The robot, the speed limit, the controllers and the wireless and networks tabs. In the robot tab, you will configure many options on the arm, the actuators, the interconnect and the vision module if you have one. For the arm, the, in the project subsection, you can select the type of end effector you have. Then, in the base subsection, you can set all the actuator stock offset to zero, change the servering mode, restore the factory settings or reboot the robot. Be careful for the last two options. Be sure that the robot is in a safe position because it will be shut down. Finally, you can set the Wi-Fi country according to your own situation. In the tool subsection, you can enter the mechanical and inertial properties of your tool if you have one. Then, you can define the gravity vector according to the position in which your robot is mounted. Finally, in the last subsection, you can define the massive properties of your payload if you have one. In the actuator tab, you can set the torque offset to zero for each actuator individually. If you use a different end effector from the robotic ones already implemented for the gentry, this is where you can configure the UART i 2 c and GPIO interface for your own end effector. And you can, for each one, configure a lot of different parameters. The vision module is composed of a color sensor and a depth sensor. In the vision ship tab, you can configure some parameters about these two sensors. For example, the resolution or the frame rate. And this is the same for the depth sensor, resolution or frame rate, for example. The second subsection of the configuration tab is the speed limit. This section is divid divided in two. The basic subsections allow you to set a speed limit globally for all the controls mode. If you want to be more specific, you need to go in the advanced subsections where you can set speed limit per control mode. You just have to choose your control mode and enter your values. The next section concerns the controllers. In this page, you can view, select and create control mappings for the robot. Control mappings are defined for any physical control device associated with the robot. By default, you should find the gamepad and the wrist. Each device has a card. If the device is connected to your robot, you will see connected in green in the top right corner of the card. Then, for each card, you can view the control mapping of the device and activate one of them. For the gamepad and for the wrist, you will only have one mapping. You can also view the control maps for each mapping and activate one of the maps. For the gamepad, you can choose between twist linear, twist angular and joint. Finally, for, uh, finally, you can open the Mappings Editor for the control device by clicking on the pen button. Here, you can see the mappings and activate one of them. And you can also see the maps related to this mapping and activate one of them. For example, if I want to uh, activate the Twist Angular map, I click on it and then click on Activate Map. You can see the little check. You can also create a new mapping by clicking on the plus button. Let's do it. Let's first give a name to this new mapping. Mapping to set. And you, also, you can also create some maps to this mapping. Let's create a map here. Let's rename the map, for example, uh, linear movement. 
once you had create a map, you need to assign one or more, or more functions to it. So click on the plus and select the function option. Then you need to, ch to choose the type of your functions. For example, in my case, I want to create a linear translation along the z-axis. So I'm going to choose the linear movement and select translate z positive to negative positive or negative. So I choose the linear movement, I check the box and then I click on the add. But now to complete the functions, I need to assign a control mode which will control the function. Remember, uh, so I click on the three little dots uh, in the control panel and click on assign control. Remember here, we are in the gamepad card, so we can see a graphical representation of all the available controls on this specific control device. It shows which controls have already been assigned and which are still available. Let's choose, for example, the dumb left axis. Then you need to add a control name, for example, um, Z linear. And then you need to um, specify the event used to trigger the function. For an axis control, as for this example, this means the direction. For example, positive or negative. I will choose positive. And then I click on assign. And now my function is complete. Let's create a new map. This map, I will give it a name, for example, which pose set. I will add a function to this pose function, and I want, for example, an action which will re will will wish as a zero pose. So I select it and click on add. Now I need to assign a control mode. I click on the assign control, and here you can see that is a button control mode and not um, an axis. I will, for example, choose the X button. The name will be which zero. And as, for, as before, I need to define the event will will trigger the function. And for a button, I can choose between button click, button down or button up. I will choose button click and then assign. So now you know how to create a new mapping for your control device as well as the associated maps and control functions in this map. The last section of the configuration tab is about the wireless and networks configurations. In, in the Wi-Fi section, you can choose a Wi-Fi networks to connect with. In the Internet sections, you can configure the IPv4 address and settings of your robot. Be very careful with these parameters because if you change the address and click on Apply, you will be automatically disconnected from the web app. You then will need to enter the new IPv4 address in your Internet browser to reach again the web app. The next tab is the Safety tab. You can reach it from this menu, but also from the robot icon I described in the previous series of video by clicking on the View All Safeties button. In the Safety page, you will find Safety information about the ARM, the actuators, and the interconnect. It's a list of Safety items, for example, Join Fault or Network Hero. Then you know the status, the status of uh, the item normal or hero, if the item is activated or not, and the information about the, the um, item itself. For example, for the maximum ambient temperature, two thresholds are defined, a warning threshold and a hero threshold. So, if the ambient temperature is above the hero threshold, an hero will be raised. This is exactly the same thing for each actuator and for the interconnect. You cannot change anything in the safety page. This page allows you to check on your robot issues and state. For example, if I create an emergency stop, I will see that a safety issue appear, appear in the ARM tab. I can see that the emergency stop is activated. If I clear the URL, 
the status is back to normal. Now let's talk about uh, the System tab and more precisely about the System Information sub-tab. Without any surprises, this is where you can find all the information about the ARM, the actuators, the interconnect and the vision module if you have one. For example, you can find um, the type of your base or your end defector and also the serial number of uh, your controller. You also can find a lot of information in the Actuators, Interconnect and Vision tab. You cannot configure anything in this page, this is just information. The second tab is the Monitoring tab. I've already done a complete description of this page in the previous video. So here I will just sum it up by saying that this is where uh, your controller gives you feedback about its state and control mode, the actuators about their position, stock and velocities, and the end effector about its position, twist, etc. You can find, find more detailed information in the detailed subtab. You can download all the information you can see in both pages by clicking on the snapshot data button here and here. Finally, the last subtab of the system folder is the upgrade page. This is where you can download the last software version we have released. To do so, you need to download the file from our website in your computer and then upload it in the web app by clicking on the upload button. Then, just follow the procedure. Be sure that your robotic arm is in a safe position before launching the upgrading process because your robot will be turned off. The last page we will see today is the user page. Remember from my last video, you can access this page from the user account in the option bar by clicking on account. In this page, you can manage existing accounts by clicking in more and then edit here. And uh, you can create new, new user. Click here and then add. Um, in fact, you can create as many users as you want. And finally, you can change the display of the page, clicking here, large, medium or small. This is the end of this video. In the next video, I will present you the last folder of the web app, the operations folder. More precisely, we will see how to create protection zones and how to create actions and sequence of actions. Stay tuned!